I've been a little um, tough on you guys lately. It seems like when 22 came in, uh, we somehow were raised to a new level of consciousness. And the teaching has taken on a much more richer, I think, turn, but it is deeper. It is deep. One of my favorite scriptures in, that says uh, that the things of the spirit are foolishness to the natural man. Think about that. The things of the spirit are foolishness. Some of you have friends and family things are foolish. Some of the stuff you believe. Uh, and even some of our own naturalness sometimes doubts some of the spiritual stuff. There's nothing wrong with that when, when it comes up. That's a part of our carnal humanity where the ego still resides at some level to bring us doubt and to challenge us and accuse us uh, of not uh, maybe believing like the world believes or culture believes and so on and so forth. Uh, but we, we all have stayed true to that, that, that teaching that is coming. So uh, we're in a new place, and you that are missing Wednesdays should not miss Wednesdays, or you should at least listen to Wednesdays, because I think you're going to miss a level that is going on here and has been going on uh, for uh, a while. So be sure and, and check all that out. This Wednesday, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I'm very uh, tempted to cancel completely Wednesday, uh, and then we'll go from there. Because once I'm, uh, th they want me up walking that day. So uh, they say the pain will be gone. It's just going to be the surgical part of it that I have to deal with. But uh, I just don't know what to tell you. Every, they, everybody heals differently with that type of thing. So why don't we just cancel the Wednesday this Wednesday? All right, and, and it's very important at this time that you watch the weekly uh, newsletter that Tim puts out because that tells you what's going to happen. And I have a feeling a lot of you are not, but he works hard on that. He works hours to do that every week. And please take the time to look at it and to see the announcements, and that way you'll always know what's coming up uh, that, that Sunday. That comes out on Friday nights usually is when that happens. So please do that. So anyway, what I'm saying to you, things have been a little, a little heavy here lately. So today I wanted to do something uh, a little lighter and something that we can all benefit from as we move into uh, next week and the next week and chapter of our lives and so on and so forth. Finding happiness through the art of letting go. You know, that's the greatest art that we can learn right now is the art of letting go. That's going to be the thing that's going to challenge us the most is letting go of things we know we should but we're attached to. And I've said this to you many times that one of the things that was a blessing in evolution becomes a challenge in our, uh, our, our growing in consciousness because of the fact that evolution was about adapting ourselves to the situations. We adapted to famine, we adapted to wars, we've adapted to all the things that have come along and survived as human beings, and that's a great testimony that we are survivors of so much of the history of this planet. We've made it. But I think there is something going on in the depths of the collective soul that is calling for more than survival. And that is for us to strive as a race of people. And the teacher, the teacher, my teacher, my fifth dimensional consciousness of myself, I call Yeshua, our Jesus, has made us known that we can have life and more abundant. I keep looking for that abundance of life. I'm talking about just money. Every time we hear the word abundance, we think we're talking about more money. Uh-uh. No, the Bible says, and this is good, even though it's in the Bible, it's still good. As the soul prospers, so shall you prosper. Get that? You don't get the money. You don't get the prosperity. You don't get the twin flame partner. You don't get the, the perfect job. You don't get that until the soul prospers first. Your soul is your consciousness. Your mind, your awareness has to prosper. You can't prosper financially if you have a belief of lack going on in your soul. So you have to heal the soul because the soul outrays itself into your world as it is. So 
is true, change your mind, change your life type of idea. So letting go, and letting go of third dimensional um, events and circumstances and people is going to be the challenge. And that's going to happen. You're really in a time of divine separation, if I can call that, in which we are being pulled aside from those who might in any way drain us or, use, or misuse our energy into a time of preserving our energy for this, the events that are coming up on the planet at this time. So it's going to be important that you stay and live an aligned life. Be in the right place at the right time. Meet the right people at the right time. And quit holding on to things out of obligation and things that because that you don't want to be uh, rejected or because you don't want to be seen a certain way. Stay truth to yourself. Be strong to yourself. Right now is very, very important. So... Um, let go and make life a lot easier. I think uh, this idea of happiness or joy uh, is something that is innately given to us at, at, at our creation. It's like an inheritance that is given to us. It is a state, a state of our being. I think we think sometimes because we don't have it, we got to get it. I don't think that's working anymore. Maybe it's working. For, if it's working for you, God bless you. Come and do a workshop for us or something. <laughs> but I'm just not. Every little thing I pray and every little thing I say is just not popping up like magic. I wouldn't be having surgery tomorrow. That's not, that's not what's happening to us. And the reason it's not happening is, is because if it... I want you to get this. If your prayers was answered at the level that you had a belief in lack of sickness and illness, then it's not a match. It's not a match. And what that's saying to you is that it's not going to manifest until you raise your frequency to match what has already been accomplished in creation. In other words, happiness becomes a frequency match. Peace becomes a frequency match. Health and healing becomes a frequency match. I hope here real soon when I get through this, I want to do a, a, a workshop for us here on frequency matching. How to match frequencies. But you can pray all you want to at, at a level where you're coming from lack and doubt and not manifest anything because you're not a frequency match. So you have to raise your frequency. And that's what prayer is about. Prayer is a way of tuning your frequency to a match for the thing you want to manifest. And that's where Kathy comes from so beautifully in her prayers. She speaks where we want to go. She doesn't say we don't have it. We have it. We're just not in frequency match with it. And through prayer, we tune ourselves to that. So uh, anyway, that's all I want to say about that. But there's going to be some things... You're going to be asked to, to let go of that you're very attached to. And a lot of things you're attached to is causing you sorrow and pain. And you won't admit it, but you're still attached to it. So I don't want to tell you. I'm just, I don't know if it's a warning or what. But I'm telling you as we move further and further into the next years or so, that there's going to be tremendous reordering of life as you know it from 3D. So, what do we need for happiness to let go of? First, your need to always be right. <laughs> Some people have got to be right. And oftentimes they doubt themselves, but they still want to be right, even though they're not sure that what they believe in is right. So there's many of us who, who can't stand the idea of being wrong. Wanting to always be right, even at the risk of ending great relationships or causing a great deal of stress and pain for us and for others. Look how many families are being uh, separated and couples and friends and people because of this 
polarization that's going on between vax and non-vax and, and conservative and non-conservative and this and that. So much of that is going on, which is tearing us up as a, as a people, as a nation. Because people want to defend being right. Of course, the miracles tells us, would you be, rather be right or happy? And the answer is happy, because that's what's right. <laughs> if you're happy, you wouldn't be feeling happiness if you were not in alignment, and that's what being right is. Right is being in alignment. Even Wayne Dyer says, I'd rather be right or I'd rather be kind. We need more kindness in the world today. We need to let go of our need for control. This is huge. This is so huge. And I've done my best to push you beyond your, your comfort zones uh, of control. You don't need to be control when you're praying. You don't have to be control of your prayers. For the Spirit knows how to pray when we do not. Now, I'm not condoning everybody has to speak in tongues, but uh, what you need to do is you need to speak a prayer that is from Spirit not a prayer that is from your mind. And you'll be surprised because you think, oh, I'm going to pray this because this seems right for this person. And then you turn it over to spirit and, 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 and the prayer comes out totally different. Oh, that's not what I wanted. In other words, I want to see you out of pain. I want you healed. Or, and maybe spirit takes over, but says, this is part of a contract that they need to learn something. May they learn what it is in, in this circumstance that so they can be then free from it. Do you follow that? That's important. You understand. That's the way I think. So in pain, I want to pray them out of pain. But who knows where that pain's going to take them. No pain leaves people where it found them. It'll leave you with more depth of compassion and, and understanding. And it'll expand your experience into the world. You know, I could get into that, but I, I want you to understand that spirit doesn't always pray the way you would pray. The Bible says you can pray amiss. You can miss it by praying what you, how you think it ought to be rather than how it should be. And that's why all prayers should be from the mantra of let this be according to divine purpose and contracts and agreements that have been made in this lifetime. All prayers should come from that. Because you don't know what contracts people have made and the things they're going through is to drive them to a higher state of consciousness. Let go of your need to blame. Let go of your need to blame others for what you have or don't have, for what you feel or don't feel. Stop giving your powers away and start taking responsibility for your life. I call it the them, if it wasn't for them. If we can just get rid of them, if we can change them. And that is major, major collective projection. If someone really pushes my buttons to the point that I am so upset about them that I even could interpret that I do not like them very deeply, if I'm being spiritual, now there's a difference being a spirit and being spiritual. You are a spirit all the time, but you're not always spiritual. Spiritual means bringing that spirit into your consciousness, your guidance, right? So it's not about them, it's about us. The way I react to someone is because it's already in me at some level. We talked about that a lot in the Course in Miracles. That whatever comes into my life that shows me anger, the ego interprets it as you made me angry. I was fine until Rhonda showed up and said what she did to me. I was doing fine. It's all her fault. I was having a peaceful, great day, and she came in and said this and just pissed me off royally. 
But if I'm going to be spiritual, I'm going to say, what is it that was in me that Rhonda reminded me of that I had suppressed into my unconscious that needs healing and balance? Therefore, I turn Rhonda into an opportunity as a teacher and a healer for myself. Because nobody can make you angry unless you have anger in you because anger resonates and matches the frequency of anger. Hmm? Whatever's in you is going to be the match. I've been angry since I was five years old and my mother left or my dad left or somebody did something like that. I mean, we just have this stuff way back that we refer to as why we're angry now. That's ridiculous. Unless somebody's doing what they did to you when you're four or five years old, it ain't a happening. It's only in your memory. Let's quit dragging around these weights that have us so easily beset we can't run the race and receive the prize. That's what it says. Cast away the weights that have you so beset and heavy so that you can swiftly run the race and receive the prize of life. Now, again, I'm going to use Jesus as a great example. Whatever, whatever this, this guy's about, he certainly was about process. No doubt about it. He's the process guy. I'm the way. I'm the way. I'm the door. I'm the process. If you learn what I did, but you see, religion took out what he did and turned him into a a icon for a major religion. And it wasn't about his message, it was about him. Receiving him, receiving the body of Jesus. But anyway, whatever Jesus did uh, in the process of undoing his ego, here's what he said to when the, now the adversary could be the devil, the adversary could be anger. That'd be your adversary, right, to love. It, it, it could be, um, what's something else? Anger, fear, anxiety, depression. All those things that come to you is your adversary. That is your little, your, your little part of yourself that's called the carnal aspect of self. So it said when the adversary of Jesus came to him, get this, he found nothing in him. Anger did not find anger in Jesus, for anger had been undone in the consciousness of Jesus, which is Christ consciousness. If you're walking in Christ consciousness, you cannot hold fear in Christ consciousness. So, he did not respond to anger because he had no anger in him to respond to. Anger was not a frequency match. That's why tuning is so important to your life. Maybe you don't want to do tuning forks. I don't know how you want to do it. But do something to keep vibration and frequency in your life. And you should do it every day. We should all start out every morning with some kind of pure vibration that follows us through our day. So anyway, let's stop the blaming thing. And uh, it's not easy. I, I have to watch it because I still want to blame them. <laughs> Or him. <laughs> but if I'm going to be spiritual and do what I teach, then I'm going to say, what is him or them awakening in me that I need to heal in me? <coughs> Everybody with me on that? Yes. Let go of the need to impress others. Stop trying so hard to be something you're not and just make, uh, uh, not to make uh, others to do things just to like you. It doesn't work this way. The moment you stop trying so hard to be something that you're not, the moment you take off your masks, <laughs> get on the road of Damascus, <laughs> the moment you accept and embrace the real you, you will find people will be drawn to you effortlessly that our frequency matches. Now, everybody comes in your life, if, say you're a C note. Everybody doesn't have to be a C-note. You can have diversity in your life because you could get an, a person who's an E-key because C and E go real nice together. 
or you'll track somebody who's a G because C E G makes a C chord and it's all harmonic. So there's room for diversity. Everybody doesn't have to be exactly like you or believe exactly like you, but they can be a harmonic match that makes you richer. A C and an E is richer than just a C. A C and an E and a G is richer than a C E and by itself. It's very important. I can't stress this that I'm feeling the importance of making sure that you keep all the power that is yours accessible to you and not give it away in places that it is not appreciated or wanted. Again, that's going to be some letting go that we're going to find challenging. Let go of your resistance to change. You know, I've taught change for, oh my God, 30, 40 years has been my message. It's change, 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 change. But I love teaching change when things didn't change. <laughs> you know, I did, I, I'd go to a meeting and preach change for two hours. But when I stepped out of there, I wanted things to be just like it was. <laughs> and if something did change, I went, oh, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm confused. I don't, you know what I'm saying to you? So we have to learn how to resonate, or I like to say, dance with change. And as it said, be the change. Be the change. The thing about heart light, that it's not going to be in any way attracting a lot of people is because people want a place that does not change. They really want a church or a spiritual gathering that they pretty much can predict exactly uh, what's, what it's about. And Heartlight, we are very open to change. We're about change, constantly changing. So let's let go of our resistance to change. Joseph Campbell says, follow your bliss and the universe will open doors for you where there were only walls. And I love this one, let go of labels. That's one of my favorite pet peeves is I do not like being identified by a label. If you go to the essence of who you are, you do not have a label. If there is one, it is only I am. It's when you tack on something to I am that you get in trouble. Hmm? I'm, I'm an alcoholic, I'm an atheist, I'm a born again Christian, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I am gay, I am straight. On and on it goes until we lose the I am for the label. We don't see each other's I amness because that's the part of us that is us in them. It is our connection to them. I am a Christian, I am a Buddhist, I am black, I am white, I am Asian, I am Latino, whatever. My goodness, just think of how the labels divide us and separate us continuously. Stop labeling those things, people or events that you don't understand as being weird or different and try opening your mind little by little. Wayne Dyer says the highest form of ignorance is when you reject something you don't know anything about. Most of us don't know anything. You know, people get into politics that are not politicians. There are politicians, whether you like them or not, that are politicians. That's their calling, that's their passion, or they wouldn't have maybe gotten into it. But we forget they're people. <laughs> We're just people. People with a label. And let go of your fears. Fear is just an illusion. It doesn't exist. You created it. It's all in your mind. Correct the inside and the outside will fall into place. Franklin D. Roosevelt said the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So true. Let go of your excuses. Send them packing and tell them they're fired. You no longer need them. A lot of times we limit ourselves because of the many 
excuses we use. Instead of growing and working on improving ourselves and our lives, we get stuck lying to ourselves and using all kinds of excuses. Excuses that 99.9% .9 of the time are not even real. Excuses. You know, I don't really want to get into it and I don't know what I, statement I want to make about all this, but it looks like this um, COVID thing is going to be around with us a while and I think the best thing is to stop um, ha having such fear of it. You know, uh, what's missing is one word, trust. I don't think we trust. Now, I'm not talking about blind trust and blind faith. I think it takes both. I think you have to have some common sense. I think you need to do whatever the research is that you need to do. I think you need to work out your own salvation. Uh, the best that you can is what is right for you. But I don't see this thing just going away overnight. I think it's going to be just like the flu is and other things. Some of us are going to continue to get our little boosters. I will. I got my vaccine for polio. I got my vaccine for other things. And um, I've had COVID and had a very mild cold situation. In fact, I've had worse colds than I've had with COVID. I have no symptoms or signs of it whatsoever. And I think most people are probably going to have this, and most people who are being tested do have it, who don't even know they have it. I think we need to, my advice, and what has helped me is to stop feeding into the media too much. They are just using this way too much. It is too dramatized. And find the places that's trying to give you just information without an agenda of some kind. We've suggested to you Free Speech TV is a good one. Uh, I'm a fan. And, uh, and uh, I like it because it's not run by corporation. There is no advertising of corporations, so nobody's controlling the media of free speech TV. But that's my fit. That may not be yours. It may be for you to liberal, but maybe the truth is more about equality. <laughs> I go where the equality is. If you want to wa watch what I follow is anything that teaches equality, that every person has the same right to happiness to the pursuit of happiness. That's where I'm going to go. Um, but that's me, because I just so believe in the message of equality. Let go of the past. That's not an easy one either. And I know, I know it's hard. Especially when the past looks so much better than the present. And that's the thing that fools me is... I hear a song back in, one of my favorite times for me was around 77, 78, 79, 80. That was just a good time for me. I was living in Little Rock, Arkansas. I was 32 years old. I had met some wonderful friends. I had discovered disco. Because <laughs> I'd been preaching, 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 and all of a sudden I landed where I had a little bit of a life, and, and I discovered Donna Summers <laughs> and all of that. And it was a, a wonderful time. But the truth was, it wasn't that great at the time. There were challenges, there were issues, and there always has been wherever you've been in your life. It's been there. It's just that the brain edits that all out, and you see yourself as younger, maybe healthier, uh, and you start to think that you want to be drawn back to another time. And that keeps you from going forward into the co-creative destiny for ourselves so we have to let go of past and I certainly say that for myself because I have a lot of memories and a lot of experiences behind me that I can draw from uh, that sometimes can take me away from what I'm about in the present time like that and last but least not least is letting 
living, uh, letting go of and living your life and not meeting always others' expectations. Way too many are living a life that is not theirs to live. That is true if you think about it. They live their lives according to what others uh, think is best for them. They live their lives according to what their parents think is best for them, their friends, their enemies, their teachers, their government, their media thinks best of them. They ignore their inner voice, their inner calling. They are busy with pleasing everybody and living up to everybody's expectations and they lose control over their lives. They forgot what makes them happy. And I want to close with this little lesson. Um, most of our relationships with people start at the physical, cellular level. A mother, our dad, brother, sister, your kids. Do you realize they had a life before you? That they brought into that incarnation that you, there's parts of them you do not own? I can only speak of my, what I know about my experience. I know without any doubt in me that I chose my parents. I know I did. I know that I had an agreement for them before I ever became their son. They ever became my parent. In the spiritual world, the Course says we're all brothers. Of course, it uses the masculine. But we were all sons of God. And sons of God is code for where we're all individualized spirit beings of the one. That's all it means. The son of God is the Christ that we all are. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. But I was a very unusual child. I'm sure that's not hard for you to uh, imagine. <laughs> An only child. But I was unusual. I, I, I talked unusual. I believed unusual. I said unusual things that was very different from the very beginning. And what I'm trying to say to you is when I think of... I'll give you an example. When I started the ministry, I was 17, 17, 16 years old, 17 years old, and got on a uh, train going to Wilmington, Delaware, to play the organ for a preacher, and I remember my folks standing at that train station, and the look on their face, and people saying, why didn't you stop him? He was a teenager. You're his parents. But you see, my parents understood that there was a part of me that did not come from them, but came through them. And they knew that I had a life path, and they were called to be supportive of it. No, my dad never believed like I did. He was a totally traditional fundamentalist Christian man who studied the literalism of the Bible. My mother loved me enough she didn't care what I preached. <laughs> she just loved me. But yet, and I've told you this story. Maybe this is for me today. I don't know. Just bear with me. But I remember getting that, that 55 Ford Fairlane convertible with turquoise leather seats for my 16th birthday. <laughs> Love that car. But when I said I was going on this journey and leaving school, leaving everything to go preach. And my dad, who did all he could do with tough love, to say, if you go, you cannot have this car. I will take it away from you. So it was the car, or it was following the passion that was burn literally burning in my soul. I mean burning in my soul, I can't tell you. And I remember saying the strangest thing to my dad. I said, Dad, I love you, but not enough. I love my purpose for being here more. And I left that car sitting there in the driveway to get on a train and live in the YMCA, in the, ended up actually in, in Philadelphia, in the scariest part of town. 
living on bananas and fig newtons and being done dirty by this preacher who wanted me and ended, wanted me to be almost a janitor to the church. Now I'm just saying that to say to you that I have had the support all along of those who have been a part of my contracts that we made previously to come. Are you with me? I guess I'm just saying to you, you that have issues with children, a companion, family members, they're more to you than what they have been to you biologically. They are spiritual beings and souls with a path with contracts of their own and the trouble and you know where family trouble and dysfunction comes in is because we cross that line with each other and we try to control people's sacred part of themselves because we think it's best i'm sorry mother doesn't always know best daddy doesn't always know best a man who wants his son to be what he was or a woman who wants to form her daughter into the wife and mother that she was. That isn't always what is right for you. So be thankful for those in your life that have supported you and blessed you. That even that did not agree with you or know what to do with you. I don't feel I'm talking to myself. I think I'm talking to the choir of some of you that say I have actually walked a very unique path the people we bring into our lives. Look what I've accomplished. To bring someone like Tim into my life. But there's been other people in my life. My wife was a wonderful woman, and made a wonderful mother for my child. I don't regret any of these because they've loved me unconditionally and supported me whether we agreed or not agreed. So you that have found that in your life, you have found it, you're blessed. Be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. Don't give your power away for validation to be liked. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, what we get from this today is that you will help us and give us the strength to let go of what we need to let go of us that is long, no longer serving us for our highest good. Whether it's in the form of events, circumstances, people, situations, and aspects of ourself that we hold on to. Today we are willing to let go. Let that be your prayer in your heart today. Let go of anything in my life that is no longer serving me or has served me and brought me to what it, where I am today. I release and I let go. I am free to follow the Spirit wherever it may go. let go every exhale is an opportunity to let go let go what is conscious unconscious subconscious or in the collective consciousness whether you're aware of it or not it is no longer serving me at any level i choose to let it go in this moment and leave here lighter than i walked in the doors this morning or tuned in to you that are tuning in. I let go of my fear. I let go of my anxiety. I let go of my depression. I let go of my lack. I believe in lack. And I make sacred space in my mind, in my soul, in my heart to receive the divine word of life.